One of the greatest misconceptions about nuclear bombs is that they instantly annihilate everything in sight. But the fallout from a nuclear blast actually has layers. When it explodes, it leaves in its wake a kind of destruction that's both fast and slow, and one whose devastation stretches much farther and lingers far longer than many might suspect. Here's what actually happens when a nuclear bomb hits. For the sake of example, imagine a 10 kiloton nuclear bomb goes off in Times Square. The moment it detonates, a white flash is visible for miles. The light is so bright that, for a moment, people as far away as Queens and Newark can't see. At the same time, scorching heat radiates outward from the explosion site, followed by a massive fireball. The core of the fireball is tens of millions of degrees, as hot as the center of the sun. There are few survivors within a half mile radius of the blast. Buildings and vegetation in that same range ignite or char. The bomb disrupts gas lines, burns structures and power lines, and knocks out communication towers and cell phones within about 1.6 miles. Flying glass and debris are immediate danger, so stay where you are until you're sure it's safe to move. A colossal wave of pressure follows the fireball, traveling at the speed of sound and producing winds as fast as 500 miles per hour. All told, the explosion creates a crater 50 feet deep and a shockwave of about 3.2 miles, reaching south to Gramercy Park, north to the Met, and east and west into the Hudson. Residual pressure shatters windows, and piles of rubble as tall as 30 feet tower within a half mile radius of Times Square. This has all happened in a matter of seconds. Meanwhile, in the days and hours after the initial explosion, a plume of fallout travels in a single direction away from the blast site. The plume could, for example, settle up the eastern seaboard, leaving radioactive dust on everything in its path. The most radioactive region of the plume could reach about 20 miles to New Rochelle. A much larger but less radioactive region of the plume, known as the hot zone, could extend about 60 miles north to Monroe, Connecticut. Now large amounts of pulverized debris and molten earth are pulled up into the mushroom cloud. The radioactive atoms produced in the explosion join with the particles of earth and debris. The mushroom-shaped cloud forms and climbs higher. The first pulse of radiation wreaks biological warfare at the molecular level of everyone outside or in weakly insulated buildings, altering the structure of key cellular machinery and injuring DNA so that within minutes, people begin to feel nauseous and dizzy and begin to experience headaches and vomiting. Then, anywhere from several days and two weeks, symptoms of those exposed to radiation worsen. In severe cases, infected people will become delirious, emaciated, and incapacitated. In most cases, people with radiation sickness die in one of two ways. Their immune system is no longer able to fight infection, or their digestive system becomes too damaged to function. Those who survive do so by seeking shelter, ideally in a strong underground structure like a basement, a tunnel, or a parking garage. Fallout from a nuclear blast is extremely dangerous at first, but the danger decreases rapidly. Within 24 to 72 hours of the explosion, it's safe for survivors to reemerge. Theoretically, a bomb of this size would kill about 250,000 people and injure roughly 300,000 more. That's 20 times more deadly than any act of terrorism or natural disaster in all of America's history. And if in this hypothetical scenario, the bomb had been dropped from the sky instead of detonated on the ground, the number of fatalities would have soared. For context, consider this. This hypothetical scenario is a small scale example a larger nuke, like the 300 kiloton warheads that countries like, say, China or Russia possess, would kill at least 1.2 million and injure an additional 2 million more. All these factors must be considered as we plan for the survival of our homes, our families, and our nation in the nuclear age.